Thank you for joining us. Today we start the new cycle of Torah study, which is, you know, af right after Simcha Torah, which is the celebration of the completion of the cycle. Now we start the new cycle, so starting from the very beginning. Um, Bereshit, that is the name of the Torah portion. In the beginning, God created. So, of course, this is a very... Um, very important Torah portion, and there's a lot of major themes uh, included in it. So we're gonna we're gonna go till about 140. So what we're gonna try to do is cover the main topics, and then zoom in on a couple of uh, a couple of points to get a deeper understanding, and then some lessons that we could learn from it, and you know what what these ideas. Um, could mean in our in our lives. So uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna go into the text, but of course, if uh, if we have something we need to look into, we could always look up the text. It's online. I have the I have the chumash. I have the book in front of me. Um, we could always work through further questions uh, either during the class or after the class. Uh, so we could always go deeper and deeper. I'd like to make a, a one more quick um, introduction, and this is something that I've uh, repeated many times, but I'll say it again just because we're starting a new cycle of learning. I think it's important to remember that the translation of the word Torah is not Bible. Um, uh, often it's mostly, it, often it is translated that way, but it's actually not an accurate translation because the word Bible means book and the word Torah comes from the word Hora'a, which means instruction. And the reason why I find this so important is because this is, this really tells us what the Torah is about. The Torah is not a storybook. The Torah is not an old, uh, you know, an old uh, scroll that's telling us old information, but rather it's a book of instruction. It's supposed to be a blueprint for our lives and everything is supposed to be a lesson. So even if it's just a story, even if it's just something that seems not relevant, it's up to us to look deeper and find the lesson that is contained in, you know, in that story or whatever idea is being shared. Okay, so the Torah portion begins with creation of the world. The creation of the world in the beginning God created, and of course, um, it went on for six days, six days of creation. On the seventh day, God rested, which is why we celebrate Shabbat every week to, uh, to commemorate and celebrate the creation of the world. Um, now, we just, we just finished explaining that the Torah is a book of instruction, and it's really a book of commandments, because, because that's what, you know, that's what the instructions are. It's, well, what are the commandments and the details? So why is it that the Torah would tell us the story of creation? Why is that important? What type of um, instruction or lesson could there be in in the story of creation, it seems like just a story, right? So there are there are various answers, um, but I'll share you the, share with you the most famous one. The most famous one is by the commentator called Rashi, who lived about one thousand years ago. And he's the most famous commentator on the Torah. He also gives a very famous commentary on the Talmud, and Rashi is. Uh, very well known and accepted by all and studied by everyone. It's even on, if you open a, if you open a regular Torah print, um, the Rashi commentary will be on the page. Uh, the same in the Talmud. If you open a book of Talmud, uh, there, are, there are tons and tons of commentaries, but there are only a few on the actual page of the Talmud. Rashi is one of them. So this is Rashi's first explanation on the Torah. He asks the question, why does the Torah begin 
with a story. The, the Torah should begin with a mitzvah, should begin with a commandment. Why does it start with the story of creation? And Rashi answers the question and says that there'll come a time when the nations of the world will come to the Jewish people and they'll say, you are robbers because you stole the land of Israel. You stole a land that doesn't belong to you. And this is why the Torah begins with the creation, the story of creation, to make it very clear that the, that the world, the entire world, belongs to God. And God uh, chose to give this land to the Jewish people. So this is, of course, there are many things that we, that we could learn uh, from the story of creation. There are many ideas and many uh, powerful things that we could learn. But this is actually the first thing that Rashi says. I thought this is something very powerful. Um, on, a, on a deeper level, just go a little bit deeper, let me know, let me know if, it's getting, if it's getting too Kabbalistic. Um, just thinking about, you know, a lesson, what we could learn from this. So the Kabbalah talk, uh, gives, gives an gives, uh, a, a explanation and a lesson to this idea uh, that Rashi shares. And what it says is that the, um, you know, uh, the nations of the world will come to the Jewish people and say, you're robbers. And so on a spiritual level, the nations of the world is, you know, the, uh, uh, um, let, let's say, um, a, a worldly outlook or a, a, a worldly perspective will come to the Jewish people and say, why are uh, you guys are robbers? And uh, what this means on a spiritual level is that you shouldn't be involved uh, with, with um, using physical things for a mitzvah. You know, it's supposed to be, Judaism is supposed to be something spiritual. It's supposed to be something holy. You know, don't, don't uh, get involved with, don't bring Judaism into day-to-day -day activities and to daily life. You know, keep, kind of try to keep it separate. That's, uh, you know, that's the complaint uh, that, that is brought against the Jewish people. And the answer is that, the answer is the creation of the world, that God created the world, and that includes everything in it, the spiritual, the physical, the holy, and the unholy. Everything is created by God, and it's there for a purpose, uh, for us to refine it, for us to elevate it, and for us to make it better. So you got the simple story, you got the creation of the, you got the story of the creation. You have Rashi who, uh, who asks the question, what could we learn from this and why does the Torah begin with it? And you get the answer that uh, to teach us about the ownership of the land of Israel. And then you also get the Kabbalistic approach saying that it's not only the spiritual and holy that belongs to God, Everything belongs to God, and it's up to us to, to uh, do something positive and do something good with it. So that's, uh, that's the first, first idea I, uh, I wanted to share. Uh, you can please interrupt me, uh, especially uh, uh, between things is, uh, I, uh, is no problem. Uh, if there's any questions or any comments, any ideas that you want to share? I'm good for now. What's that? I said I'm good for now. I mean, I wouldn't be shy to interrupt. Okay. So it's not, not an interruption. It's, uh, okay. it's, uh, I like the conversation and I, and I like the discussion. So feel free. Um, I'd like to, to uh, continue with, with the with the story of creation, specifically the first day of creation. What was created on the first day? Light. It is the, it is light. Um, the world, God created the world with uh, 10 sayings. Um, it was just with, with words. God spoke and uh, it was created, of course, something that only God could do. 
so what did God say on the first day? He said, he said, he or there should be light. And there was light. So if you think about it, why would, why would light be created first? Okay. There was nobody there to, to, to enjoy the light. There was nobody there to appreciate the light. Uh, there was nobody there uh, to, to see anything. You know, so, so why would light be created first? Right, so, so humans weren't created until the sixth day of creation. Today, perhaps that God wanted to prepare the world um, for Adam and Eve. They should come into a ready world, which is what happened. Um, so you can say that God was, you know, really setting the whole stage and light is, you know, very important. Uh, but why did light have to be first? Um, animals uh, were not created until until the third or fourth day. What's, what's, what's the purpose of light being created the very first day? Of course, it's not by accident that it, that it was created first. So why was it? Any ideas? So the answer is, uh, the answer is uh, that uh, just like when when uh, you, you or I would create some, so you have some idea of of uh, creating something, inventing something. Your first thought is always going to be an end goal. Right, it's always going to be some solution to some problem that you're trying to fix. Right, so if you have some idea, uh, some idea, your first thought is going to be, you know, the final purpose and the end goal. Your first thought is not how, it's not exactly how you're going to get there and how it's, how it's going to come about and when it's going to happen. Your first thought is is you know the the solution and the the end goal of your idea and of your creation. So the same thing is God. The same thing is with God. When God created the world, God made it very clear uh, what, the, what the goal, the end goal, and what the purpose is. Just like when you create something, the first thing probably you think about, maybe you say it, maybe you share it with others, but you certainly think about it uh, is the end goal God uh, put that into put that into action and he put the end goal in the very first creation so why did God uh, begin the creation with light that's because light is the end goal of the creation what what, what is what does that mean how was light you know the purpose and the, and the end goal so the answer is that the, the light represents, um, you know, it's it, God's expression, and you know, uh, it, it, it's spiritual light. Also, it represents spiritual light and God's God's light and God's expression. And the, this is really the purpose of the world that we should, um, that humans should find the spiritual light. And find God's expression in in all parts of the world, in everything we come in contact with, and in everything that we have. So the world, the world is about finding finding God's expression, finding the light, and we do that. How do we, how do we find the light by by using whatever item uh, it, it might be? for a good purpose, for something positive, for a mitzvah, for, for God. And through, through uh, using something the right way, we're, re we're showing and expressing how this is, this is really part of, part of God and it's actually an expression of God. So when you see something, uh, no, when you see something bad, negative or unholy, that, that is, God's expression being concealed, right? so it's being covered up by whatever unholy thing is 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 working through it.
But, but when you take something and you use it for something good, so what's happening is you're revealing God's expression, how everything, everything really comes from God and everything that God made is good. So when we, when we take that action, we're really showing, we're really uh, revealing that truth. And this is why God created light first. Because light is the end goal, is the end goal that we should, we should reveal this light. And ultimately, the, the, end, the ultimate end goal is that the entire world, every, every person, all of us, and all of creation should express, uh, should express that, should express God. And that is, that is the time of Mashiach. The time of Mashiach is when everything, when everything is, it becomes clear. And everything becomes obvious that it is, in fact, an expression of, of God, and everything is a part of God, and everything is good. So that's why the time of Mashiach is not something that is not the era of Mashiach is not something that happens overnight. It's something that we work towards. So, so every action that we take. Every every time we we do something, we make a difference. We're 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 bringing we're we're expressing more of this light, and we're allowing more of this truth, more of God's truth, to shine forth. And in the end, in the end, when all of the when all of the puzzle pieces are are, are completed, that is that is the era of Mashiach. So. Uh, once we uh, once we complete the story of creation, we immediately uh, we immediately have some some drama with the first people, with Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. So I'd like to I'd like to talk about um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the story of first how were they how they were created. How um, how the first human was created, um, and then uh, to talk about talk about uh, the drama, the first the first sin that really changed the course of the world. So first, it's very interesting how how humans were created. They were created uh, different to everything else. To everything else um, in the world. So, if you look at the text of the Torah, you'll you'll see that every single day God said something. There should be this. There should be that. There should be light. There should be there should be animals. There should be vegetation. You know, every day God said something, and it, it uh, you know it came to be. Adam and Eve were created on Friday, on the sixth day of creation. And they were created uh, in a different way. They were created, it was a two-step process. Two-step process. So everything else was one step. God said it should be, and it was. Adam was created in a two-step process. First, God took earth and formed the shape of, of a person. Um, but then it was just it was just uh, it was just earth it was just uh, it was just a form there was no life so then came step two God blew a soul into into Adam and that's what turned him into a person that's what gave him life and that's that's what uh, that's what made him that's what made him a human being I should say it because Adam and Eve were created, were created first as one, one single unit, and then later they were separated into two, male and female. But it was really a two-step process. First, God formed, uh, formed uh, it through, uh, uh, in in the uh, with earth, and then blew a breath of life, a soul into into the body. So why the why the uh, 
you know, why the difference? Why is the whole world created one way and then, and then human beings created in this way, this two-step process? Of course, um, none, of this, none of this is by accident. Everything is very specific. And, it's, and since it's recorded in the Torah, it means that it's something for us to learn. So what do we learn from this? And uh, um, this comes from the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah says that if you think about it, the, the, two, the two components of Adam's, uh, of Adam's creation are complete opposites. You have earth and you have God's, God's breath. And, you know, and, a, and a, the soul that God blew into Adam. So you, you, have, you have really the highest and the lowest, right? Earth is inanimate. It doesn't, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have any life. It doesn't, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's the lowest thing that there is. And then, you have, and then you have the soul, which is the most spiritual thing and the, the you know, the, the most refined thing that there could be. So you have this combination of the highest and lowest coming together in, in, in a person. And that teaches us something very powerful, says the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah says that God is saying to, to the human being what his, or what its mission in the world is. And the mission is to combine the high and the low. The mission is to, to combine the spiritual and the physical. So many people believe, and in many religions, they believe that the spiritual and the physical can, can't work together. And in fact, the physical takes away and interferes with the spiritual. But the Torah and Judaism and God say exactly the opposite. And, and, and what God was saying by making this two-step process was that there is, there, there is a, the, the, the mission. The mission of Adam and Eve was, and, and, and actually all of us, because it was, this is a message to, to all of us, it's about, it's about comp combining the spiritual and the physical. So not only is it not a contradiction, not only do, do, do they not interfere with each other, but actually the whole, the point is, um, the, the, the point of, 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 uh, of holiness and spirituality is to, is to come together with the, with the physical. And this is kind of what we were saying before about showing how Show, uh, showing how everything in this world is, is an expression of God. And this, is, this idea is very much related. It's basically saying that, that we could bring spirituality into the physical. So like, and, and we do that through mitzvahs. So, so let's say God wants us to, to uh, light Shabbat candles or to build a sukkah. When we do that, we're, we're making... Uh, we're making the, the wood of the sukkah holy. We're making the, the, the wax of the candle holy. It's turning into a mitzvah. So, so this is obviously just an example, but there, there are much more, uh, much more uh, you know, deep and complex uh, examples of this. But spiritual, spiritual and physical are, are, not, a, are, not, a, um, are not a contradiction but actually the, the, the point is that they should come together. So what, what sometimes, what, 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 what at times uh, people think is the most uh, physical thing and, uh, you know, farthest from, farthest from holiness and farthest from, you know, what you might call religion or well, uh, specifically those things could could have the most spirituality contained within them. And you really, you really have this in all aspects of life. So, so the, the general idea is that God is giving Adam and Eve a kind of their mission statement. 
um, by by creating them in this way, God is is really um, God is really expressing what what they should be what their mission is and what they should be busy with. They should they should bring holiness and spirit and and spirituality and God's expression into into whatever they could. Like creating children. What's that? Like having children. Having children is is a mitzvah that is in this in this Torah portion. Pru or vu. It's a mitzvah to have children. Populate the world. But that's that's um, actually a good example. Uh, this this is a, a a good example right here. Um, uh, m- many people will tell you that having having um, intimate relations for, for a couple to have intimate relations is the most unholy thing because uh, it's the, because it's the most physical thing. But actually, Judaism has a completely different point of view, and what Judaism says is that it could be the most unholy thing. It could be the most physical thing. But if done, if done properly, it is actually the most spiritual thing and the holiest thing that you could do. And if you compare a house to a holy temple, uh, the, the holiest place in the holy temple is the holy of holies, the Kodesh HaKadoshim. And the holiest place of a house could be the bedroom because that's where the holiest the holiest act uh, could take place so of course it has to be done in the right way and there's a lot to talk about on on the subject we could we could discuss this another time but this this is just a this is just a, a, a an example of how of how of how we are supposed to bring uh, bring spirituality into into the world um, and, and that's that's the point of life, and that's that's the mission. It's not about running away from it, and it's not about living in a bubble on a mountaintop. Um, but it's about engaging with the world, and uh, you know, infusing it with 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 godliness and you know and goodness. Okay, so moving right along, unless we have any questions or comments. So to talk about the the uh, the famous story, the sin of of the of the tree of knowledge. Okay, so just to give a quick um, background to the story, God created Adam and Eve, and He placed them in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden Eden was a beautiful garden and had many trees. In the center of the garden, there was a tree. There were, there were two trees. There was the tree of life, and there was the tree of knowledge, good and bad. The tree of knowledge of good and bad. So God spoke to Adam and Eve, and he said to them, you, could, you may eat from all of the trees of the garden, except for, this, for the tree of knowledge of good and bad. So stay away from that tree, uh, or actually, more accurately, don't eat uh, from that tree. And long story short, it didn't take long for Adam and Eve to be tempted uh, to try it out and to see what would happen. And this was instigated by the Nahash, by the by the snake. Um, there's many details. You can see it in the text and in the commentaries. Uh, but long story short, they ate from the tree. And all of a sudden, they had this new knowledge. They realized they were, they knew they were naked. They knew that they need to, they, they, they knew they needed to get, to put on clothes and to get dressed. And uh, of course, God was very upset that they disobeyed. Um, and they were punished. Um, each of the three, Adam, Eve, and the snake, each got their, each got their punishments. Um, and until this, until this very day, um, you know, we, we still we still suffer 
from these from these punishments because Adam uh, Adam was told that now uh, human beings would would pass away. Um, Eve was told that from this point onward, women would have pain when uh, when giving birth, mm. and uh, the snake got got its own punishment. So we're feeling this un until until this very day. And of course, they were expelled. In, they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, and they were um, they were brought into the world as we know it today. Okay, so that's uh, that's a pretty pretty uh, outline of the story. And I'd like to I'd like to analyze the story a little bit and try to find something some insight and and delve into it for the next uh, five minutes. Um, that we still have. So, I think the first question that comes to mind is, what's wrong with knowledge? So this That's is what I was going to ask you. <laughs> so I'm glad I started with that question. Yeah. <laughs> what's What's wrong with knowledge? Obviously, there was a certain knowledge that came with that came with eating from the tree. All of a sudden, they knew they were naked. They probably knew other things also. Um, so what was wrong? What was, you know, why was it forbidden to eat from the tree? What is wrong with knowledge? Um, seemingly knowledge is, is, uh, you know, is good. And also, knowledge sorry, is always good. As, sorry as, to interrupt. As, as, you know, sorry, yeah. briefly, but it's also interesting because it feels so at odds specifically with like Judaism's reverence for knowledge and for learning. Like that's something I think is very like beautiful about it is this, you know, like don't be frightened of science and it's very good to educate yourself that's like a very beautiful part of like jewish wisdom and so this story seems at odds with that um so yeah i just i'd be interested to know that's how you, you square it sorry to interrupt that's why that's why i think that this is this is probably the strongest question of the story what is what is wrong with knowledge and there are you know why was it forbidden um there are many explanations i could think of at least six different explanations. I'd like to share one um, and, and focus on this one. Um, this explanation uh, was given by the Rambam, Maimonides, also lived about a thousand years ago, roughly at the same time as Rashi, who we mentioned earlier. And the Rambam gives, gives a very interesting explanation. And what he says was, what he, what, what he says is that before eating from the tree of knowledge, of course, they had, they had the same knowledge and they had knowledge. Um, the, what changed was, what changed from, from, uh, from you know, pre-consumption, pre before they ate the fruit, uh, and, you know, to, uh, to, to, you know, to post, post-consumption is that before eating, they could have they could have objective knowledge, and they lost that by eating from that tree. So now they could only have subjective knowledge. Right? So what does that mean? That means that that if you could look at something objectively, you know if this is you know if something is good or bad, right? But but if you lose that objective that if you lose that perspective and that objectivity, then you, you judge things by, by how you feel or by, by your background, education, where, where you come from, um, nature, nurture, you know, whatever it might be. So, of course, knowledge, knowledge is, is a good thing. Um, but what was ruined in them by eating from that tree is now now they, they couldn't have that that objective that objective knowledge of good and bad. So it was called the, the tree of knowledge, good and bad. Right. So before before they ate from the tree, they also they, they knew they knew about bad. They knew about negativity. They knew about nakedness. Um, they, they they knew everything. Um, but they were, but uh, it, it was after they ate from the tree that now they could no longer 
be sure that what they think is good and bad is you know the objective good and bad so that's what that's what humanity lost with this uh with this sin um so basically a lot of things become you know certain things could still be clear you know certain things could still be obvious good and bad but but now there's this there's this confusion and mix up and gray area because good and bad are now intertwined now we also know that god doesn't God doesn't just punish people um, or punish anyone. Um, if God d does something, it's a you know it's a it's a consequence and it's a direct result of of their actions. And the same the same is here. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about all of the punishments, but let's just talk about uh, them being expelled from the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was a place. Where where good and bad is clearly defined. It was, uh, you know, it was God's garden, but they sinned and they mixed everything up. They mixed up good and bad, and so now it was it was up to them to or their, now their job becomes now they have a new mission, and their new mission is to is to separate uh, this this mix up and to extract the good from the bad and, and, you know, clarify, clarify, so to speak, what, what's good and bad and, 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 and to, to, you know, separate the good from the bad. So where could that take place? That, that, um, that journey and that job cannot take place in the garden of Eden because in the garden of Eden, um, good and bad is clearly defined. They needed to come into the world as we know it today a world where things are, where there's a lot of gray area, a world where, where, where good and bad is, is intertwined, a world where, where good and bad is, is uh, you know, is, is, is not objective. And this is where they could, this is where they could um, begin the, the journey of um, rectifying their mistake so the mistake was that they mixed it all to, uh, mixed everything all up um, now things are not clear now things are not no longer objective it's our job it, well it, they, they they started um, their 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 job then became to start fixing the mistake and until this very day we're, we still we're, we're still working on this to fix this mistake so this could only happen in the world as we know it. This was not able to happen in the Garden of Eden, which is why they had to be expelled from it. The lesson from this is that uh, we need to find we need to find the good in everything. We need to find the good in everyone and extract it. And help extract it. So you can help you can help bring out the good in uh, others. You could help bring out. Uh, the the good and the holiness in, in things. So that this is all part of that Adam and Eve that Adam and Eve made. So this could only happen in the world as we know it. Uh, but until this very day, we are we are uh, working on rectifying this mistake of uh, bringing uh, uh, extracting the good and finding the good in everything. In everything and in everyone. So of course, knowledge uh, was always a good thing, and knowledge, but objective knowledge, to under to have a, a very objective uh, picture of what's objectively good and what's objectively bad. That's something that uh, that uh, Adam and Eve lost, and something that we that we work on to, to extract, extract the good in everyone and in everything. So this, this, uh, with this, we conclude the, uh, today's class on the first portion. Uh, of course, everyone is invited to, to ask any questions or to make any comments.